With leptospira, lepto means thin and spira means coil. So leptospira is a genus of spiral bacteria known to cause leptospirosis, a zoonotic infection, meaning it can be transmitted from animals like rodents to humans, especially people who work in sewers and waters contaminated by these animals' urine. The leptospira genus has over 20 species, and the most common species that causes leptospirosis in humans is leptospira interrogans. Now, leptospira is a tiny spiral bacteria that stains poorly with gram staining because it doesn't retain the gram dyes well, so it's classically considered gram negative. It's also too tiny to be seen with a light microscope, so you need a dark field microscope with the use of immunofluorescence. Leptospira is also a modal bacteria because it has a flagella that helps it move around. Finally, it doesn't form spores and it's aerobic, meaning it needs oxygen to grow. Currently, little is known about the pathogenesis of this bacterium, but we do know that it possesses a number of virulence factors, which are like assault weaponry that help it attack and destroy the host cells. These include toxins and some immunogenic molecules, like lipopolysaccharide, or LPS, that triggers an immune response, causing inflammation. For example, leptospira interrogans, the most common cause of leptospirosis, has adhesins, which are proteins that help this bacteria attach to the host cells, usually epithelium, monocytes, and macrophages. It also releases sphingomyelinase C toxin, which destroys red blood cells as well as the endothelium of the capillaries, which causes hemorrhage. Most commonly, leptospira gets into the host system by abrasions or cuts on the skin. Alternatively, it can get in through the conjunctiva of the eyes, especially in people who go swimming in contaminated waters. And rarely, infection can also follow eating contaminated food. Serious problems start when leptospira gets into the bloodstream, where it can move to infect other organs. This typically happens in two stages. In the first stage, there's an immune response to bacteremia, which clinically manifests as fever, but the bacteria are confined to the bloodstream and there are no signs of end organ damage. In the second stage, also known as wheel disease, the infection becomes more severe and the bacteria spread to almost all internal organs. Frequently affected organs include the liver, where the bacterial toxins damage liver sinusoids and hepatocytes, causing bilirubin to spill into the bloodstream, which clinically translates as jaundice. When the lungs are affected, the toxins damage the alveolar capillary membranes, which can result in bleeding within the alveoli. If leptospira gets into the kidneys, it can infect the interstitium, causing interstitial nephritis, or it can also cause an inflammatory reaction that damages the renal tubules, resulting in acute tubular necrosis. Finally, sometimes the bacteria can even migrate from the bloodstream and use its toxins to break through the endothelial cells that make up the blood-brain barrier to get into the cerebrospinal fluids, or CSF, causing meningitis. Risk factors for leptospirosis include some professions, like people who work in rice paddies, sugarcane plantations, or people who swim or wade in waters contaminated by animal urines. Environmental risk factors include hazards like floods, because contaminated waters are everywhere. Okay, symptoms of leptospirosis depend on the phase of the infection. In the first phase, there are nonspecific, flu-like symptoms like muscle pain, headache, chills, and fever. With conjunctivitis, there may be photophobia and conjunctival suffusions, which is when the eyes gradually become red, but there's no tearing or discharge. In the second phase, signs and symptoms depend on the affected organ. With liver damage, there may be jaundice. With kidney damage, there may be signs of renal failure, like reduced urine output and fluid retention, which leads to a puffy face and swollen legs, ankles, and feet. When the lungs are affected, symptoms include a cough, dyspnea, which is difficulty breathing, as well as hemoptysis, or blood in the sputum. Finally, with meningitis, there may be headaches, fever, and a stiff neck. Diagnosing leptospirosis is done with serologic tests like ELISA 
that typically consist of detecting antibodies against leptospira antigens in one serum. Another way to diagnose leptospirosis is by identifying the bacteria in biological samples. This can be done using a dark field microscope, or with PCR, that detects bacterial DNA. Leptospirosis is treated with penicillin G, and doxycycline can be used as an alternative. When multiple organs are affected, supportive therapy may be required, like IV fluids, respiratory support, and possibly blood transfusions. Alright, as a quick recap, Leptospira is a genus of tiny spiral gram-negative bacteria that can be seen under a dark field microscope. It's a modal and aerobic bacteria, and it doesn't form spores. Leptospira causes a zoonotic infection called leptospirosis, which has two phases. During the first phase, there are nonspecific symptoms like fever and headache. During the second phase, also called wheel disease, there may be signs of end organ damage like jaundice, a cough, dyspnea and hemoptysis, reduced urine output, and fluid retention, depending on the affected organs. Diagnosis is done with ELISA by visualizing the bacteria under dark field microscopy or with PCR to detect bacterial DNA. Treatment is done with penicillin G or doxycycline.